Welcome to the second week in our series of characteristics of the church when the church gets it right. Uh, I'm worn out with talking about when the church gets it wrong, so you're a part of my journey of exploring when the church gets it right. And to remind you of what we dealt with last week, first of all, the church is a human endeavor of trying to organize and ordain the, the followers of Jesus. It's a human endeavor. The church didn't really begin that journey till 300 years after the death of Jesus. And the criteria for determining whether or not the church gets it right is whether or not they are consumed by agape love. I want to begin with uh, the verse of a hymn that we don't sing often. It's in our black hymnal. Um, uh, the words are from Ruth Dick, the songwriter. As a fire is meant for burning with a bright and warming flame, so the church is meant for mission giving glory to God's name, not to preach our creeds or customs, but to build a bridge of care. We join hands across the nation, finding neighbors everywhere. You see, the characteristic that I want to explore with you this week, when the church gets it right, is when it is bold. And <clears throat> it's when the church refuses, in the songwriter's language, to allow doctrine or customs, creeds or customs, to prevent the church from being bold. When the church gets it right is when the church is bold. And certainly, we can refer to the life and teachings of Jesus to explore this characteristic of boldness. It was a dilemma for Jesus. Uh, Jesus healed on the Sabbath. And here was an illustration of how creeds and customs, doctrines and dogma would prevent the, Jesus from being an expression of agape love. For doctrine and dogma was a gatekeeper and the gate was closed on the Sabbath to heal a person in need. Indeed, the doctrine of what to do on the Sabbath had its roots in one of the Ten Commandments, so it must be correct and right. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And Jesus was told by the religious leaders of the day that he could not respond in empathetic love to the person who stood in need of healing because the doctrine of the established religious order prevented such an act on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said, Pooey. And he healed anyway. This and many other stories of Jesus' life can be misinterpreted that gatekeeping is never acceptable. And the church can do anything it wants to do whenever it wants to do it. Uh, license to do anything because it's the church. That's when the church gets it wrong. Such an understanding of moral license. That's not what we're exploring this week. We're exploring when the church gets it right. Is when it comes to agape love. Nothing should stand in the way of the expression and act of agape love. Now church history is full of examples when the church thought it had the license to do anything as long as it was done in the name of the church. It was right. Acts of abuse, 
murder, inhumane attitudes, and words spoken from the pulpit and the pews have occurred when the church thought it had a license to act without any restrictions. But church history has stories of when the church gets it right. And that's when the choice between creeds and customs, doctrines and dogma, and agape love, when that's the choice, agape love must prevail. And that's when the church is bold. Let's take a look at racism in the life of the church in the United States. Doctrines and customs of inequality were the norm in the life of the church. However, the church got it right when denominations, one by one, refused to allow these doctrines to keep the gate closed and prevent agape love as a movement of the church. But the civil rights movement was basically led by followers of Jesus, refusing to allow doctrines and customs and creeds to prevent acts of empathetic and sacrificial love. These followers of Jesus got it right when they were bold in attacking racism in our culture. Let's take a look at sexism. Doctrines affirming the superiority of males are, are common in the history of the church. Customs about the superiority of males are common in the life of the church and throughout the world. Time and time again, followers of Jesus refuse to acknowledge that these doctrines should prevent the movement of agape love, which affirms that the rights of women are the rights of every human being as a child of God. The church got it right in refuting traditions and doctrines and customs as they affirmed the affirmation of women's rights as children of God. A few years ago, the Council of Bishops, of which I'm a member in the United Methodist Church, had the responsibility of naming delegates to the of the United Methodist Church when the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church was granting an historic audience with leaders of Protestant churches throughout the world. When we gathered to name our representatives, there was no doubt about what we were going to do. We selected our representatives. All were women who were bishops in the United Methodist Church. They were the only women at that gathering. This is only one of the many stories when the church got it right, when agape love paid no heed <clears throat> to customs and creeds and dogmas and doctrine ruling the day. Indeed, the historic gatekeeping role that doctrines and dogma could close the gate on agape love. Nope, the church gets it right when it is bold, marked with courageous actions. Stories abound in the recent choice in this century of the followers of Jesus taking seriously the life and teachings of Jesus in acts of agape love 
relating to issues of human sexuality, the raging anti-Semitism of our day, and the crucial issue of human hunger in our world together. You see, there was a church in the Dallas area when I was bishop there that I would all the time get complaints and warnings and and people would uh, share their concern about this congregation. And I got to where I uh, anticipated and I enjoyed those complaints and expressions of concern because that congregation wasn't that big, but they were that bold. And every time the opportunity arose, they stood on the side of agape love, not creeds or customs. As I consider the history of the church, I find time and time again that the church gets it right when it has a characteristic of being bold. That indeed, when the church refuses to allow customs and creeds to be a barrier to the expression of agape love. When that's the choice, agape love must prevail in the community called the followers of Jesus and be bold in choosing attitudes and actions of agape love. Hmm. Let's think about these things together. Some of us will have the opportunity to visit on Sunday morning about this characteristic of boldness. First of all, Consider the question, when have you personally struggled to be an agent of agape love because of church doctrine or precedent? What are your favorite stories of the church getting it right in refusing to allow doctrine to be the gatekeeper of agape love? And finally, what is the role of doctrine in a church committed to being agents of agape love? I'm enjoying the journey. I hope you are too. Thank you for being a part of it.